they're not loving it. As today, we check in with Sana Hoshikawa of Niji Sanji Japan, the agency celebrating this live or hitting 1 million YouTube subscribers by releasing new merchandise, such as fragrances and a clock. While yesterday, this liver has also gone on to collab with McDonald's Japan, originally teasing this collaboration with this VTuber asset. And then later in the day, further tweeting a 27 second advertisement featuring their Hawaiian burger. Niji Sanji and McDonald's Japan collabing this time last year, featuring livers such as Kanai, Fuo Minato, and Belmont Banderas, with the voices of these livers playing in numerous McDonald's Japan restaurants. Now turning us over to Niji Sanji English's Rosami Lovelock, recently celebrating her three years with the agency, and who is a huge fan of McDonald's. In September of 2021, tweeting out, I'm getting McDonald's on the way home, woo! And then two years later, I just wanted to buy a smoothie from McDonald's, and they gave me the order number, and it's the number of the devil! So, when McDonald's Japan had tweeted out this VTuber asset recently, saying for VTubers who stream morning activities, breakfast at McDonald's with two hash browns. Rosamie would go on to tweet out with that asset, saying I got the hash browns you wanted. This being an incredibly popular VTuber asset in the past week, most especially among those in Hall Live Japan, <laughs> As fellow Nijisanji English liver, Twisty Amanazako would tweet out herself using this asset exclusively in Japanese. This all, however, coming after livers such as Albin Knox with Nijisanji English and Vanta Crowbringer with Nijisanji English have numerous times been told by their fans not to tweet out their admiration for McDonald's. And now leading to replies to Rosamie, such as Rosamie. I don't know if you are aware, but there's a huge ongoing boycott of McDonald's and other brands that are complicit in g I urge you to read a bit about it, please. It's not really great to promote McDonald's like this, especially now. Another reply reading, Rosamie, I am sorry, I do love you, but promoting McDonald's means you are supporting z and j I know this isn't your decision, and hopefully you are more than aware with the current situation. Other accounts going on to simply post this image at Rosamie with no further context, and prominent members of this boycott saying, plus one, adding my voice to this. That leading to Rosamie to respond with, sorry, I wanted to make a cute edit, but I thoughtlessly used an asset on a sensitive situation I was unaware of. I apologize and will delete the tweet. In return, Rosamie receiving replies such as, don't need to apologize woes we know you just wanted to have fun much love nah it's all good keep the post let them spout whatever they want whereas that individual that had given that plus one would further say i am really grateful rosamie responded so maturely i expected nothing less from her if i didn't think she was a thoughtful considerate person i and others wouldn't have attempted to inform her in the first place sadly the same can't be said about the fanatical quote-unquote fans if you worship a liver to the point where they can never be criticized slash educated on something and grow and learn from it, then you're not a fan. You're just as unhinged as the aunties, just a mere reflection. Others also further replying to Rosami and her apology saying, really want to give Wozami sama the benefit of the doubt, but this has happened too many times with multiple livers. As a company managing online based talents, I really hope the company starts giving media training slash media guidelines to their talents on social issues. As next today, we turn to another Niji Sanji Japan talent, Aki Suzuya. This being a first generation talent with Niji Sanji, who has been with the agency for six years and who will be graduating at the end of August. Aki earlier this year surprising many with this tweet, linking to the debut of an indie VTuber. That indie VTuber earlier being the recently graduated Chihiro Yuki, another first generation member of Niji Sanji Japan. Joining in the promotion of this indie VTuber was Moira, another first generation member of Niji Sanji Japan, who then weeks later would tweet out, I will be taking a break for a year. We'll be closing memberships at the end of the month, and for membership refunds, please contact the official Niji Sanji office. And speaking of hiatuses with Niji Sanji, we have Niji Sanji English's Kanai Nakasato. This past weekend, taking part in a massive VTuber crab game, but having not actually streamed on her own channel since May 11th. Kanai just hours ago, sending out this community notice on YouTube saying, 
Hey there, everyone. I'm announcing an indefinite streaming hiatus and pausing of memberships. When I get back, my first order of business is repaying members with two watch alongs, which I owe you all from previous months. Thank you all for being so kind and understanding. I'm sorry that the announcement took so long to get out. Love you all, Kunai. This as it was also noticed that Kunai had not streamed on her own birthday, that being on July 9th. Nitisanji on that day sending out a happy birthday notice on their highly restricted subreddit, but without a correct image link. The agency is still taking time to sell birthday merchandise for this liver. Sales of that merch still available until June 27th. This is Nichisanji Japan has also been playing catch up, now helping Hina Asuka, a Nichisanji Japan member of nearly six years, today debuting her 3D for the first time. This liver suffering from chronic asthma and very often unable to go into the local Japan offices. As we also have Nichisanji liver Seto Miyako, a talent with the company for nearly five and a half years and soon to debut in 3D for the first time. All while this weekend, Luka Kaneshiro of the Nijisanji English Wave Luxium will be debuting in 3D after being with the agency for two and a half years. And speaking of VTuber agencies, we now turn to Idol. This agency earlier having worked with the indie VTuber, Rosa Nagashi. Rosa now tweeting out, Hey everyone, I have some things to share about my experience working as a freelance mixer and audio engineer for the VTuber agency Idol Core. Going on to post this Google document reading, I've debated posting about this for quite a while. It's gotten to the point where I don't think I have any other option. I would like to shed some light on my interactions as a freelance mixer and audio engineer working with the VTuber agency Idol. I started working with Idol in December of last year when I was invited to do mixing and sound effects for their Christmas voice packs. Over the course of the next few months, I did most of Idol's voice packs and even worked on some covers. Very often, these commissions would come in as rush projects, having sometimes less than 24 hours to be completed. With the Christmas voice packs, I needed to do all of them on Christmas Eve and Christmas morning as I didn't receive the commission any sooner and they needed to get them out mid Christmas day. I want to be clear and say that I never minded doing these rush jobs because I could usually fit them in my schedule and they never required an awful lot of work. I showed a lot of flexibility and always did my best to work fast and efficiently when they needed me. This willingness to work fast in a time of need is important because I received the exact opposite from them. On four separate occasions in the span of six months, I did not receive payment on time, sometimes even having to wait three additional weeks before finally being paid for my work. Payments only go out once a month, meaning more than half of my invoices weren't paid on time. I always made sure to send my invoices on time, sent reminders when they needed to be paid, and made them as simple to review as possible. However, invoices repeatedly went unpaid or were even lost entirely, causing me lots of headaches and having to chase them up. I've still yet to be paid for my work I did for them on June 13th at time of writing. At the end of June, an announcement was made that the next round of payments was starting and we were asked to resend links to our invoices to make sure they didn't miss any. Three weeks later, no invoices have been paid so far. Normally, I'm pretty flexible with this kind of stuff. The previous three times, I was annoyed that I was being paid late, but I know that a VTuber agency can't be easy to run and so I let them take their time. Typically, when I reached out about unpaid invoices, they were always paid within the next 48 hours. This time is different though. I've reached out on multiple separate occasions about payments this month and all I have gotten back is a quote, we're working on it. As some of you may know, I have just moved countries. I naturally made a lot of expenses in doing so and not receiving payments for work I did leading up to the move, which I had to do to cover my expenses, has really thrown a wrench in everything. As a result, I reached out to other freelancers who have worked and are working for Idle to ask about whether they were being paid and it seems I'm not alone. There are at least a dozen freelancers who have done work for Idol in June and have yet to be paid at the time of writing. The commissions range from simple voice packs to art and video editing to mixing work for music, all of them unpaid for. I am lucky that my invoice isn't as big as those of other creators, but the combined total between all artists is large. Now, I want to be extremely clear that this is not the fault of the talents or the managers I have been speaking to. The talents are some of the loveliest people I have ever worked with, and some of them have even reached out out to make sure I was being paid enough. They are the reason I have continued to work with this agency despite the issues I've had. Because at the end of the day, I just want to work on cool things with cool people. Please don't send any hate to the idol girls. They're the last people to deserve any. The managers I've been speaking to have also been incredibly understanding and I believe are not at any fault. They simply don't have the ability to do anything else but reach out to the people above them on my behalf, which they have consistently done immediately. I am out of options. Reaching out to individuals 
managers hasn't worked. Reaching out to the talents I have worked with hasn't worked. Posting about it in the channel all other freelancers have access to hasn't worked. This is my last resort. Artists and freelancers are a giant part of the VTuber community. These artists have visibly been respected less and less over the years, and it's time for agencies and larger creators to stop taking advantage of us. Without our creativity, they could not exist. I am posting this simply to ask whoever an idol is the end responsible for the payments of artists, talents, and staff to please do their job and communicate with us. When you run a large business with lots of staff and freelancers working for you, you are directly responsible for the livelihoods of every single one of those people, and acting with this amount of negligence can and will have a significant negative impact on many of them. Rosa adding this edit, I would like to clarify that payments were originally promised by monthly once on the 10th and once on the 30th, during which the invoices of the previous period are supposed to be paid. Nowhere do they state that payments will be made an entire month later, and on the occasions where I was paid on time, it was at the start of the month immediately after the invoice was sent, not a full month later. Another resource chipping in and saying I can vouch for the claims made here. Having worked with the agency since January of 2023, I can say that this has been an issue since day one for me too. The constant delays in payments, management being silent unless called out, it's all too familiar to me. Back in mid-2023, I, much like Rosa, planned to confront idle management on this matter, contacting other editors, collecting receipts, and piecing everything together. I only stopped because the CEO directly contacted me to address this issue. Hell, he even made good on his promises, and for a time, communication and payment went smoothly, at least for me. However, it's been over a year since then. The issues have returned and persisted for months now, which is affecting everyone. We checked. I prefer not to make my receipts public, as they don't just affect Idol, but the editors and talents present in them as well, the latter two being innocent. But if Idol continues to neglect this issue, I don't see any other way of getting their attention. This has to stop. Diego slash pattern saying can confirm. Staff and talents are super sweet and not responsible for this, but if you end up working with Idol regardless, definitely get paid up front. No hate to anyone, of course. Freelancing is just hard enough as it is to have to worry about chasing after late payments. Prominent creator Euphric also saying I can confirm your confirmation, while Orange Change would state, sadly, I had a similar experience. Clawmaster also chiming in with, I can echo these statements being made. There are some good people working there, but there are some problems I ran into with them for the year I worked with them. Payments were delayed and communication needs to be improved. I won't post my DMs, but I do echo what has been said. Further, we have Tomzy with, I don't normally talk about stuff like this, but I got what I thought was a big break and I was so excited to get to work with Idol as there are some talents in there who I loved watching and really wanted to get to work with, most notably, Juna and Kai. It was a mess. I signed NDAs and had no guaranteed work. It was in a large Discord, and there would be just pings in a Discord when a short became available, and it was just a first-come, first-served basis. And if you didn't open Discord within a few seconds and click claim, you couldn't get the work. This meant you couldn't even ask for information about the job. It would just say who it's with and if it's short or video, etc. So information was super sparse. You wouldn't know VOD length. Is it scripted or a clip short? Is it something that needs to be lightly edited or heavily edited, etc. Also not to mention, since time zones exist, certain people would be at a massive disadvantage to this. Half the time when I asked who to talk about with issues, it changed every time, as if the staff were swapping around all of the time. I love the talents at Idol, and I think they are amazing, but the experience with Idol was really disheartening for me. Thankfully, I've had some good experiences with corporate companies since then, but I really hope they get it sorted, as I think the talents deserve so much. I just want to reiterate, this was nothing caused by the talents and might have just been my experience being in the GMT slash BST time zone. And I really hope it is improved as the talents in Idol are amazing and deserve so much success. This all coming after Idol Bandit at the end of June had shared similar sentiments, then taking down their tweets at the request of the CEO of Idol. Idol responding to that document of Rosa's with, we apologize for the poor experience and the stress it has caused. We're committed to improving and we'll address this in an upcoming announcement. In the meantime, if anyone has an unpaid invoice, please contact payments at idle-company.com and we will handle it ASAP. This further bringing us over to Idle EN's Ren Penrose. The Royal Prince quote retweeting that statement of Idols and saying, hey, if we've worked together in the past and you've had any unresolved issues concerning payment, DM me here or Discord and I'll bring it up to the guys trying to sort everything. It's the least I can do. As Ren would go even further, making a full community notice on YouTube, sending out this important notice, reiterating their tweet, and further adding, it came to my attention earlier today that several people 
people who have done creative work for the company haven't been paid in a timely manner. Also, I'm not at leisure to give you all the details. I can confirm that it's a real issue going on. As someone who has benefited hugely from that work, all the shorts, cover songs, original songs, art, overlays, etc. on my channel wouldn't be able to exist without it. I think it's only fair that these people should also be able to benefit from their work. Please be aware that most of the staff at Idol, including literally all the talents, don't have any control over where our money goes. Most of them have had no hand in how this has turned out. Shout out to Lonnie especially. She's doing a lot of real important work for all our sakes right now. Also shout out to Mina, mostly because she helped me make a bunch of Shakespeare and Hathaway gifts, but that's a personal thing. I will admit it's a tad daunting speaking openly about this stuff, but I think even if I get in trouble, it'll have been worth it. Second shout out to Lonnie for having my back on this one. You're so real. With that in mind, do not bring this up to other idle talents. We know what's going on, and there's only so much we can do whilst managing our own problems. Don't be overly rude towards upper management either. It won't solve anyone's issues any faster. And if you're rude towards the freelancers themselves, then man, I don't know what to tell you. Thanks for your time. Support creative people. Never be afraid to speak out about your problems. Remember to double check your bank statement from time to time, and go check out Lala's birthday stream tonight. She earned it. Anyway, here's a rock Pikmin. The original freelancer Rosa going on to make a second edit to the Google document and reiterating that edit in tweet saying management reached out to me soon after this post blew up and I have now just been paid for my work. However, as you can see in this thread and the quote retweets and also in DMs to me directly, there are still a lot of artists who have dealt with and are dealing with these issues. Therefore, I will not be deleting this post and will still ask to share it around as hopefully this gives other artists and freelancers the courage to speak out, get their payments sorted, and force Idol to make sure this never happens again. The Soul Wall Vexpo, an upcoming VTuber convention, has announced the attendance of Ren Penrose, among many other Idol talents. Vexpo tweeting out, you've got a chance to meet royalty. Here are the details for Ren Penrose's meet and greet. Vexpo also tweeting out, sometimes you have to fight fire with fire. Inya is coming to Vexpo. Idol yesterday wishing their talent a happy birthday, alongside a merch release saying, match hats with Inya, add her checky to your collection, and much more. That is just two days prior, another member of Idol was celebrating her birthday. That being Lala, also receiving her very own hat and other goods for her birthday merch. Her alongside all the other talents in Idol ES also joining Vexpo. Vexpo just before today's recording also coming to us with yet another concert announcement. That being for the premium concert on Saturday, August 10th from 8.30 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. Asking who are you most excited to see? This premium concert involving Made Mint, Bow the Whale, Raina from Globy and Milky Queen, and coming after the concert from the day before, involving both agency and indie VTubers alike, one of those performers being the demon queen of V Shoujo, Iron Mouse, the top female streamer on Twitch for the third week of July, and recently giving viewers an eyeful of their upcoming model. This all while Deserto had reported Twitch VTuber Claudia Moneta paid $68,200 to charity to play games with Pokemane, Valkyrie, Iron Mouse, and Sea Dog VA. This VTuber confirming my winning auction bids. Let's go. Over $68,000 going to charity. Sea Dog VA himself quote retweeting with got confirmation that this has been paid in full. Who are you? Claudia further tweeting out, I spent $69,000 at Sea Dog VA's charity auction. Going on stream to confirm they are not a millionaire, but this was a significant chunk of their savings. Oh, while well, further along with V Shoujo, we have K San coming to us with this brand new album. Outfit. Zon saying, I had the honor to draw the model for Kason's new outfit. Hope you all like it. Yeah, you're not saying things. It's true. Kyoryu Kuramo offering up numerous reference sheets of this new outfit of Kason's. Iron Vertex confirming, yes, this is a Tinga cross Kason crossover. This guild having worked on the rigging for this model. This being an official collaboration between the VTuber and this very special adult toy brand, including merchandise such as an acrylic stand, t-shirt, and a very Tenga-shaped tissue case, which we are not going to chance showing here on YouTube.com. This all in the wake of VShojo's big announcement for the month that they have opened auditions. VShojo two days ago sending out this reminder, VShojo applications are ongoing until August 6th. This being separate from the recent VShojo Japan auditions, and nearly three years after VShojo had opened up their first auditions in August of 2021. That's not all, as we also have production Kawhi's Reina's son, the fitness guru Fridge Goblin, the agency now announced
announcing an upcoming 3D birthday concert for Reyna, welcoming her first ever 3D solo live concert in commemoration of her birthday. This concert will be streamed entirely for free on Sunday, June 28th at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. As today, we return back to Hall Live Japan's Momozuzu Nanashi. As shared in our last episode, who is now on hiatus, this after a massive collaboration with Joypolis, a collab featuring loads of bespoke merchandise, and also coming after a Hall Live Japan Gen 5 collaboration with Gigo. Oh, well, hours after that hiatus announcement, Good Smile Company would share the latest shots of the Nanashi Nindoroid, complete with all that beetle fun. That same day, Hall Live Japan would also announce the releasing of even more Hall Live Friends to Go plushies, including the new 13th volume, which does include Nanashi. This Hall Live talent still expected to take part in the Gen 5 4th Anniversary Fan Thanksgiving Festival. The event itself kicking off in mid-August and streaming tickets available until September 8th. Further with Hall Live Japan, we have Natsuhiro Mitsuri, recently celebrating her birthday, complete with new merchandise, including acrylic stand, certificate, and crossbody bag. All while on the day of, this godly VTuber had gone on to show off her brand new outfit. And also with Hall Live Japan, we have Fox friend Shirakami Fubuki and fellow Westabu Laplus Darkness. The two officially collabing to promote the upcoming Ketchup and Mustard movie, Deadpool and Wolverine. Laplus wasting no time to make this edit for the collab that while other Hall Live Japan towns like Takane Rui and Best Girl Robokosan had teamed up with Warner Brothers to give their impressions of the horror movie The Watchers. Hall Live Japan also turning a lot of heads with this announcement for the start end unit. That's right, we have brand new VTuber Gamer Girl Chairs. This of course catching the attention of our very own co-host Cody, tweeting out, excuse me, Hall Live, may I please have a formal blazer with this insignia so I can wear it to every formal event I have to go to ever. Thank you kindly. Lastly with Hall Live Japan, we have Aski launching her brand new album today and not only selling out her upcoming live concert set for August 3rd, but announcing two more dates for September 17th and 18th as this concert had been in such high demand. Demand that of course includes loads of brand new concert merchandise. And no, that's not all for Hall Live merchandise. Good Smile tweeting out, attention chum buds, pop up parade, Galgura splashes back onto the scene with the re-release of this figure. Don't miss out on adding everyone's favorite shark to your collection. Pre-orders now open. You are also being a part of this merch release, that being the Hall Live Collection Volume 2 Original Mini Figurines. Hall Live saying these smalls will charm you with their adorably sized myth or treat outfits. And on the eve of their very first anniversary, we have Hollow Advent merchandise. Hall Live tweeting out many sized versions of your favorite Hall Live production talents for Hollow Mini, including keychains, cushions, figures, and clear folders, and bringing us over to the Hall Live meet at Taipei 2024 event. This event, including Hall Live production talents like Kobo, Altair, Gavis, and the w- most well known Hall Live talent of all, Shoto. What? Regis Altair now celebrating two years with Hollow Stars English. Because I'm 3D here with congrats on your second anniversary, Altair. Thanks for allowing me to set up and optimize your 3D model for VR chat. It looks so great in your public VR chat world, Heroes Haven. Regis confirming the release of that world, saying it includes cozy atmosphere, karaoke stage, video player, pillow fort, aquatic life, and more. Saying it's now available in the community labs, but with enough visits and favorites, it can be made an official world. Altair giving thanks to Trishell VR for the work on this VR chat world, while Guild Tempest presents a special collection of voice packs featuring their relentless passion to protect their homeland and embark on missions that test their courage, drive, and unity. That's right, more voice packs are here of the boys, along with a brand new original song, Unchained. Shinri saying, you guys have no idea how difficult it was for me to stay quiet about this. It was so much fun recording it in the studio, not only for the songs during our 3Ds, but also for Unchained. There's also a lot more that'll be coming out throughout the week from Tempest in Japan. Hope everyone continues to enjoy what we've cooked. But maybe it was a bit overcooked as we have this notice and apology from Hall Live Production English saying a flaw was found in the credit section of Unchained. The song has temporarily been privated while they make adjustments. We also have Gold Bullet with Hall Stars English saying the birthday merch is real. You still got a chance to dab up these goodies before pre-orders close, which is until August 5th. You got time. Don't sweat it. Gold Bullet also joining the others in Armis at Anime Impulse. This Phoenix, Arizona event being called a destructive debate saying you can provide the questions. They'll provide the hot takes. It's being promoed for Saturday, August 3rd as come debate with the boys on a hilarious selection of questions created by you. And speaking of males, we have eight stars official complete with 
with a new talent teaser of their brand new unit, Chrono Prince. Brave Group US saying the Brave Group APAC team gathered four young men that are waiting to meet you. Everyone check them out and follow them on X and YouTube. Those debuts set for this Saturday, July 27th. As lastly today, we check in with educator Professor Lando, now revealing his upcoming VTuber design. Saying, gets the cats out of the bag. I'm the Meowster of Disguise, the one and only Casper. I'm going to be doing a soft debut as a PNG tuber soon. Please join me on the road leading up to my official model debut. This being an exquisite work from Hayama Fair, the character illustrator for numerous indie VTubers. Casper also giving us the date of August 3rd at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, saying my spies are hard at work prepping for it. We're launching way sooner than expected, so go easy on the little guys. They've been through a lot leading up to this. As that is all for this episode, as always, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe below. Send in your VTuber news to our Discord, as we'll have more things VTubers say for you soon.